everybody this is Gina from Gina Makes It and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be diving into the world of coffee dyeing in the first part of my five part series, The Basics of Junk Journaling. So I coffee dye in a very easy and straightforward way. So you can see my setup here. So to the left I have a half sheet pan. A half sheet pan measures about 18 by 13 and there's about a one inch lip around the perimeter of it. And I use this size just because I had it and it was really the only pan that would hold a 12 by 12 piece of paper and it, it just fits inside of it. So it's really the perfect a vessel to do my coffee dyeing in. I don't use this pan for anything else. I use it only for coffee dyeing. It's heavy duty and it just really works quite well. So you can see that I keep my coffee in a ball jar and this is just leftover coffee that was sitting in the coffee pot that nobody drank. So I don't want it to go to waste because I'm always coffee dyeing something and so I just I have two little jars and I put a little sticker on the lid so I know those are my coffee dye jars and that's what holds my coffee. If you let the coffee sit in there too long it will get moldy just a warning so um, use it if that's what you're going to do. If you're going to keep it in a jar like this then use it you know within a couple days I'd say and do not drink it like that's definitely not something you want to be doing so you can see that I first pour coffee into the sheet pan and then I start layering so right now I'm doing some ephemera and I'm doing some lace and some fabric and just some bits and pieces of stuff that I had laying around that I wanted to throw into some coffee to make it look a little bit more aged so I'm just pouring the coffee over it I'm kind of pushing down with my fingers I'm flipping it over I'm kind of getting it all smushed around and then I walk away and for this exercise here I leave Leave it in the coffee for about five to ten minutes it was not long and the coffee was not maybe a day or two old so it's been about five or ten minutes and now you can see how the coffee has already started to saturate the paper itself so I'm just pulling it out and I'm being kind of careful because it is wet and it, some pieces could tear and I'm just putting it on an old towel and I'm just layering them I'm piling them up on one another if I could grab more than one that's great because that means there's it's less likely to rip and I'm just gonna place them on this towel piled up on top of each other and I'm gonna let them dry and I'm gonna let them dry for however long it takes I'm gonna move it to another counter that I don't really use and it's probably gonna take about overnight maybe uh, overnight to maybe the afternoon the next afternoon because I'm doing this in the morning for everything to dry completely so once I get this pulled out of the pan I'm going to start the process with the same coffee that's in there with some eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper so I'm going to keep the same coffee in there like I said and I'm just gonna place it down smush it and I'm gonna turn it over because I just want the whole piece of paper saturated for the first layer I don't necessarily do that with all of the layers but I have this lace here from the last coffee dye session that I did and now you can see I'm squeezing it because I want a few drip marks I notice when I put drip marks on it it leaves some very interesting uh, transfers so I'm always at the end trying to add a few drips with my fingertips or with something else that's in the tray so I have some more coffee and I'm just gonna add it because it was getting a little bit light on coffee because that first round sort of soaked it all up so I'm just going to be adding pages and I'm pressing it down and I'm not necessarily too concerned that each page is saturated because I know that it's going to seep through as I put the coffee pour the coffee over it so I may be doing I don't know 10 I don't really count 10 pages maybe yeah it's probably around 10 pages and I'm just smushing it all around and I'm gonna walk away again for about five to ten minutes so there have been times that I've completely forgotten about it and I've left it in overnight and I would wake up and I'm like ooh, I totally forgot about this and so what that results in is a deeper darker dying so the less time that you dye it the lighter it's going to be but this has been only 10 minutes and it is still pretty significantly dyed now it's 10 10 minutes have passed and you can see just by the transfer of that image that it did soak in and saturate the paper now I know a lot of people complain that um, the pages tear when they take it out and sometimes they do you just have to be really careful but you can see what I'm doing when I'm taking it out as I'm dripping the coffee on the page underneath it now that one ripped just a little bit which is fine with me because I like those rips they sort of add character but I'm taking and I'm dripping each layer because I find that when I do that and I just let it dry it creates some very interesting transfers it doesn't do it all the time but it does do it um, 
a lot of the times. So now I'm just repeating the exact same process with some more eight and a half by 11 copy paper. This is like the most generic paper that you can get. And so I'm just gonna pour a little bit more coffee on top of it because the last batch soaked up a little bit more. And I think I'm almost at the end of my coffee here that I have stored in my two jars. So I'm just placing more pages down and I'm swirling it around and I'm pressing it down and I'm just basically repeating the exact same process that I have done and now I have some 12 by 12 paper that I'm adding to the top of it and like I said earlier you can see that it fits perfectly in this half sheet pan it was like made for 12 by 12 paper which is just really great so I'm just swirling it around and trying to get the coffee covered on most pieces sometimes I like it when there are areas that are white that don't really get that coffee dyed and sometimes it seeps through through the bottom you can see now it's 10 minutes later and you can see the big difference between that top 12 by 12 piece of paper and so now there it's just gonna sit on my countertop and like I said it's just gonna dry on these towels and these are the towels that I use for for coffee dyeing it's they get stained and I just wash them and it takes the long the more you have piled up on top of each other the longer it takes to dry so I would say that this like I said took probably to the next afternoon maybe even the next evening to dry now that might not work for some people because having that all piled up on their counter might drive them crazy I have a little bit more counter space in my kitchen so it doesn't drive me crazy some other people like my mom says she likes to put it in the oven because it's like a cathartic type of action she enjoys doing the repetition of the coffee dyeing method that she uses this is what works for me I would consider myself busy a busy person I know everybody is I'd say these days and so this is what works for me so now I'm just showing you all the rewards of our efforts and so here are all the pieces that I coffee dyed and so let's see let's say this took about 10 minutes of work 30 minutes total time uh, we did three batches and I'd say we got some pretty good coffee dyeing here I'm very pleased with the results. Like I said, I didn't really set out to do much. There's a really nice transfer in the middle of that piece of lace, if you can see that. Um, it's, I didn't set out to, to achieve any sort of a technique. I just basically wanted it dyed. And I got some surprises along the way, which is sort of the fun. Like there's a, a section there that just did not get any sort of dye. And there's sweet princess trying to butt her way into my video <laughs> um so i'm just gonna go through these pieces of ephemera and like this one you can see parts of it are still white parts of it aren't and these are just journaling cards and pieces of ephemera that i bought that i knew that i wasn't going to use unless they were dyed because they do have sort of a vintage feel they have some there are some pretty flowers on them um you can see that one has some drips to the side it's really an interesting process it's almost like a surprise on what you're going to get after you do it at least this method of doing it and it's so simple it seems daunting um prior to doing it but as long as you have the right method like the right tools to do it it's really no more difficult than just pouring coffee on it pressing it down and then allowing it to dry that's basically the extent of the effort as you just saw so i am just flipping through these items quickly So the next day I had some extra coffee and I decided to throw this 12 by 12 piece of paper in just to see what it would look like and I'm really pleased with that. And my mom also had gone to the dollar store and she got um, a whole bunch of doilies just for a dollar. And so you can see here I decided to just throw them in my pan and quickly throw a little coffee over them and it was another quick bath and I have to say that I am quite pleased with how they turned out. Um, I love coffee dyed doilies. It's one of my favorite things. Um, I don't even like to use the white doilies now. They are, they're like way too white for me. I just love the way that the coffee and these are three different sizes for a dollar it was really a pretty good deal i have to say and i'm kind of picky about my doily design and i have to say these are really nice so here's the paper all of that copy paper that we um 
just coffee dyed in the first part of this video and you can see the different transfers that I got. I got watermarks, I got lines, I got different levels of color on all of them. This is the 12 by 12 paper that I threw in there at the end and I am really really pleased with the way that this um, turned out. Now I do have a problem because I tend to not want to use my coffee dye paper. I think oh I should save it which is like the most absurd ridiculous thing in the world because I could just make more and it's literally just leftover coffee and copy paper. So don't allow yourself to try and hoard your coffee dyed paper because it's ridiculous. So I'm just going to flip through the rest of these and like I said some of it's ripped, some of it's folded, some of it's wrinkled and I really like that. I like the differences in all of the papers. Now I have heard that some people kind of ball theirs up when it's wet and they let it dry that way. I have never tried that because it is pretty flimsy. It's on the lighter side and so I'd be afraid it would rip but for them it works well so that might be another technique you might want to try if you're looking for more weathered looking although this is very crinkly and this is very weathered coffee dyed paper. So now you know that you don't have to spend an entire day dyeing your papers. You can just take 10 minutes, 10 or 20 minutes out of the day, even just five minutes if you just want to do one batch and let it sit and put it to the side and then you've got a whole bunch. And if you do that every day, then you have kind of a lot in your stash. So this is some legal paper. I am in the middle of cleaning out my craft room and it is quite the process. And I found some legal paper, which I believe is eight and a half by 14 inches. And I decided to throw some in just to see because I never really thought about using legal paper. And now that I have some, I'm really excited to incorporate that into my signatures. And to create some different types of envelopes with it because it's going to give me a larger canvas to work with. And so I coffee dyed these the exact same way that we just went through earlier in the video and I got some really awesome transfers on these just like the other ones. And so I'm really excited to use these. So stay tuned for part two of the basics of junk journaling where we are going to talk about signatures, how to select papers, and how to put them together. I even threw in a piece of fabric at the end here just to see what kind of transfers I would get. And again, I got some pretty amazing transfers. So as always, thanks for watching and for contributing to my channel. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you on Thursday for a fun envelope tutorial and on Sunday for junk journal with me. See you next time. Bye.